I'd like to thank Wildwood Claire one not just because she gave me a couple of shoutouts that got me lots of new subscribers, hi new subscribers, but also because she consistently leads me to fountains of fundy gold. Like this guy, a virtual encyclopedia of all the dumbest creationist arguments. We're here because there's an intelligence, a design, a purpose, or we are here because everything is just an accidental occurrence of biological forces. If the second is true and evolution is true, there is no purpose to life. You can live any way you want. There is no God you will be accountable to. The reason that the religion of evolution is so important to so many is because they don't want to be accountable to God. They do not want to be held responsible for their actions. This is something that I hear Fundy say all the time. The only reason that you deny that God exists is not because you really believe that God doesn't exist, it's because you want to get away with sinning. Fundies who say this must think that atheists are as dumb as they are. If somebody really believed that God exists, why would they think that simply denying that he exists would allow them to get away with sinning? Do Fundies really believe that atheists say to themselves, hmm, God will send me to hell if I sin, but I don't want to stop sinning. How can I get around this? I know, I'll just say that God doesn't exist. Seriously, you really believe that the vast majority of the world's biologists are brilliant enough to come up with this hoax of evolution, but still dumb enough to think that that strategy would work? Creationists seem to believe that virtually everybody in the world with a PhD in biology is actually this dumb. Not understanding this truth regarding evolution and creation is going to skew your whole worldview and it begins to open the door for misunderstandings regarding the validity of marriage about racism, about uh, sin and uh, fooling with life and suicide and so many things that are plaguing our society can be traced back to evolution. Yeah, if we could only turn back the clock to those good old days before people believed in evolution. If we could only go back to the 1840s when of course there was no such thing as racism or suicide or any of these other things that can be traced to evolution. The idea of the interworking systems and organization and design coming from explosions is so absurd someone compared it to um, dropping a bomb in a pile of logs and getting a log cabin. What are the odds of that? <laughs> what are the odds of giving a monkey a typewriter? How long would it take him to produce an Encyclopedia Britannica? Can you throw a bomb in a junkyard and get a Boeing 747 or the space station? It's just as plausible to believe in evolution that the organization and the intricate design that you've got in a single cell of life, not to mention the human body, could happen by something exploding. Now, to some extent, I believe in the Big Bang. I think that God said it and bang, it happened. Yeah, the Big Bang, evolution, none of this makes any sense whatsoever. You know what does make sense? magical incantation. This argument paints cosmology and evolution as random processes, and the people who use it seem to think that no order can exist unless things are put in an order by an intelligence. But this is demonstrably not the case. Let's say you get a jug of water and you throw a bunch of rocks and sand in there and you shake it all up. All of that sand and water and rocks will be randomly distributed, but if you let it sit for a while, order will emerge. The denser rocks and grains will settle to the bottom, the lighter ones on top, and then the water on top of that. By creationist logic, there must have been some kind of supernatural intelligence guiding the heavier rocks to the bottom and the lighter ones to the top. But we know that no intelligence was necessary for this order to emerge. Evolution works in an analogous way. Mutations are random, but the organisms that we see today are the product of mutations that have passed through the unintelligent filter of natural selection. Order, even complex order, need not be the product of intelligence. Then of course you've got something that's called the law of entropy. Evolution operates on the basis that things are getting better. But every, now I didn't say the theory of entropy, it's the law of entropy, which is the inevitable and steady deterioration of a system or society from order to disorder. Everything we observe in the world today, anything left to itself without outside energy being put into it, without intelligence being added to it, it falls apart. And of course everybody knows that the earth has no outside source of energy. And where does the law of entropy say anything about intelligence? Microevolution is very different from macroevolution. Let me see if I can read a definition for you here. 
Microevolution refers to varieties within a given type. Change happens within a group, but the descendant is clearly the same type as the ancestors. This might be better called a variation or adaptation, but the changes are horizontal in effect, not vertical. And science gives a very clear definition of these types. They're called species, and one species evolving into another has actually been observed. What you call macroevolution has actually been seen. Now, the common trick of the creationist is to say, well, things change into different species, but they don't change into different kinds. But what is a kind? Genesis chapter 1 verse 24 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And even Kent Hovind once said that this actually gives the biblical definition of a kind. The Bible says they're going to bring forth after their kind. So the question is, can they bring forth? And the dog and the wolf can mate and bring forth. They're the same kind. The dog and a banana cannot. They are not the same kind. Well, interestingly enough, that is the scientific definition of a species. According to the definition of kind given by your fellow creator Kent Hovind, we do actually see things change from one kind to another kind. So stop giving me this BS about how we don't see macroevolution, we don't see things turning into other kinds. Even by the biblical definition, we do see animals change from one kind to another kind.